Hi, I'm Dr. Tracy Marks, a psychiatrist, and I make mental health education videos. In a previous video, I talked in detail about the body-focused repetitive behaviors such as hair pulling, skin picking, and nail biting. These are compulsive behaviors that can cause a lot of problems and are much more than just having a nervous habit. These compulsions don't respond well to medication, but can respond well to a therapy called habit reversal training. This therapy can also work with tics and nervous habits, like touching your face. Important precautions for COVID are that you disinfect your hands and refrain from touching your face. But we touch our face a lot more than we realize. Some studies have shown that people touch their face on average of 10 to 20 times an hour without even being aware of it. In this case, touching your face isn't necessarily a compulsion, but a habit. So habit reversal training can also help with touching as well. The most effective way to use this technique is with a trained therapist who can create a customized plan for you, but you can apply the concepts on your own. Habit reversal training can be broken down into three phases, awareness training, competing response training, and establishing motivation and support. And then there's an add-on technique called stimulus control that pairs well with habit reversal training to make it even more effective. Let's take a closer look at each phase. First, there's awareness training, which we can further break down into three steps. The first step is to identify the habit or the problem behavior that you wanna break. This could be hair pulling, skin picking, nail biting, or even touching your face. The next step is to recognize when you engage in the behavior and what triggers it. Even though you may have an idea of when you do it, you should get someone to spend time around you to point out when you do it because there may be times that you mindlessly engage in the behavior like when reading or watching television. Stress is a common trigger, but so is boredom. Them. Once you start paying attention to the behavior, you'll get good at recognizing when you do it. Then the third step in this phase of awareness training is to identify the earliest signs of the behavior when you first feel the urge to do it. This is called early warning training. With the compulsive behaviors, you may have physical sensations. For example, you may feel tingling in your hands when you want to chew them or tightness around your mouth that makes you want to chew your lip. Also, Think about if there's any situations that makes this most likely to occur. By the time you complete these steps, you should be fully aware of the problematic behaviors, when and where they happen, and under what circumstances they're most likely to happen. So write down the places, situations, and early signs down in a journal so that you can refer back to them. The next phase is training yourself to engage in competing behaviors. Here, you substitute a new behavior for the old one that you want to extinguish. And here are some examples. For things that involve your hands, like nail biting, skin picking, or hair pulling, you could squeeze a ball snap a rubber band on your wrist, or you could play with yarn to substitute for playing with a pulled hair. You wanna pick something that occupies the body part that's involved in the behavior so it can't do the old behavior. It's even better if the activity somewhat resembles the old behavior. For example, with hair pulling and skin picking, you not only pick, but part of the ritual usually involves playing with the object and feeling the texture of it. So wrapping a piece of yarn around your finger or fiddling with the yarn can be a good substitute because it keeps your hands busy and you can play with the texture of the string. Now you may wonder, how is this helpful? I'm still fidgeting with something and I'm just trading one thing for another. And that's true. The goal is not to keep your hands still, but to keep them busy with something that doesn't produce a negative consequence like bald spots, chewed fingers with sores, viruses in your eyes. You get the picture. That said, it's still important that the competing behavior be something that's not noticeable to others. Some people will clench their hands into fists or fold their hands across their chest as their competing behavior. And it doesn't have to only be one thing. You can have a few options. To practice the behavior, you pretend to do the old behavior, but before you do it, you switch to the new behavior and do it for one minute. This breaks the pattern and weakens the urge. Because remember, with the compulsive behaviors, you have strong urges to do them, and this technique works to interrupt the urge. That one minute interruption takes some of the wind out of the sails and lessens the urge. The next phase is cultivating motivation and support. For the motivation, 
you write down all of the negative consequences of the behavior. How did it or how can it cause problems for you? It doesn't always have to be serious as far as the outcome. What's the inconvenience cost to the behavior? Writing these things down is also a good journal exercise. You wanna use this list as a reminder for why you need to stick to the plan. Support is what you get from someone you choose to make part of your plan. This person will know what your problem behaviors or habits are and know what your new comp competing behaviors are. Then that person will be on the lookout for the compulsive behavior and its warning signs and remind you to use your competing behavior. They can also cheer you on, so to speak, if they notice that you haven't engaged in the compulsive behavior. So the support person provides positive reinforcement and helps you detect warning signs or detect the behaviors when you don't notice them. The last part of the strategy is what's called stimulus control. It's a separate process, but it combines well with habit reversal training. It's designed to reduce the things in your environment that can trigger your behavior. With stimulus control, you take a list of the triggers and situations that you made in the awareness training phase and then put blocks in place to make it harder for you to be triggered. With competing behaviors, you're blocking the compulsive behavior or the habit, but with stimulus control, you're blocking the trigger. So it's like you're trying to catch things early. Examples of stimulus control are covering your bathroom mirror to discourage face picking or limit the time that you spend in the bathroom, putting salve or petroleum jelly on your fingers or skin. Keeping your skin slick with heavy creams makes it harder to pick. If you use instruments like tweezers to pick, then discard them so that you're not tempted to use them. If you lie in bed at night and pick, wear gloves to bed. And these are just a few examples of ways to control your triggers or things in your environment that make it easier for you to engage in your behavior. You may realize that over time, as things change, you recognize new warning signs for which you can create another control. Keeping up with all of this is where journaling comes in handy so that you're not having to keep it all in your head. To help you organize this process, I created a handout that summarizes the steps. You can download it from my website and you don't even need to put in your email address to get it. But if you are a part of my email community, you already got the handout in your inbox when this video published, so you don't have to go searching on my website. Watch this video for more on the nuances of body-focused repetitive behaviors. Thanks for watching. See you next time.